Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take an old dark dresser like this and transform it into a rustic barnwood restoration hardware type of feel. If you are new here, I am a furniture painter and refinisher. And what that means is I'm usually taking stuff that I find around my house or other things that I get on the cheap and I'm making them over. If you're interested in learning about making furniture over, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that little bell and that's gonna let you be notified every time I upload a new video. As always, I will link all the products that I use today down in the description box below, so make sure you check that out. There's also a ton of great info in there, including how you can follow me on all my socials, which you should be following me on Instagram, at pretty underscore distress, because I always do behind the scenes on there, on my stories, so you will see a sneak peek of the projects I'm working on before they go live here on YouTube. As promised, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step so you can achieve this finish at home. So if you are interested in taking a piece of furniture and getting it to look like this, just keep watching. My last video was a vlog on everything I went to to achieve this finish, so if you're interested in watching that before you watch this step by step, I will put a link somewhere over here or over here. thought it should pop up right now and you can click on that and watch if you're interested. Here is my piece I'm gonna work on today. This is another part of my bedroom set. This is uh, my nightstand. I have two of them, so I'm gonna kind of be redoing them in tandem. And the first thing I'm gonna do to get this dark stain off is use um, citrus strip. And the reason I'm doing this is because my veneer on here was really thin. A lot of times I use an orbital sander to get a finish off which has always worked really well for me in the past um, but with this wood there was a really thin veneer and what that means is it's a piece of wood that's glued on to like MDF or plywood and as I was sanding it I was stripping straight down to that MDF and when you get to that you can't stain that um, and it doesn't you lose the wood grain and everything so what I ended up doing was getting this citrus stripper and since I'm refinishing inside today I am over opening all my windows, I'm opening my door, I'm getting a good cross breeze in here. I'm also gonna wear a respirator and splash goggles and latex gloves to protect myself. I would really recommend doing this outside. Um, it's cold, so I can't do this outside and it's easier for me to film for you guys if I do it inside. So please just use like common sense and figure out what works best for you. So we're gonna be using this chip brush. It's just a nice cheap brush that we're gonna be able to throw away when we're done. I have a pair of nitrile gloves. These are really heavy duty and they uh, can be used with chemicals. They're chemical graded so that they're gonna be safe. The citrus strip won't eat through them. My splash and impact goggles. I have this three pack plastic putty knife set. I have this little brass brush that's gonna help get into our crevices. So this is a wire brush. Some coarse steel wool to help get into the cracks of crevices. This is my respirator mask with uh, filters for vapors. Plate or a cardboard box to catch all my stuff. So I have my goggles on and I have my gloves on and what you're gonna do is take your citrus strip and you're gonna pour it in a um, metal bowl, do metal because sometimes the stuff can <laughs> melt for whatever container you put it in. Okay, so I'm gonna pour this in here with my goggles on. Close your lid so you don't spill this on your floor. Okay, so I have my chip brush. I'm just gonna dip this in here, just like that. Get a little bit of product on here and I'm gonna start painting. You wanna do this pretty thick um, so that it's like clinging on there and it's gonna start reacting with the finish and strip it off. Be careful not to splash it everywhere. Then I'll start taking off paint off the walls and on your floor and everywhere else. So that's why it's the best idea to do it in a garage. And that's where I did my first piece, but I wanted to be able to film really well for you guys and not have that outside ambient noise, you know, garbage trucks and school buses and all that. So I am braving inside to do this for you, just showing you this first part. And then I am gonna put my mask on for the rest of it. I just wanted you guys to be able to hear me. <laughs> Um, while I'm talking, explaining, putting this on. I'm gonna go into hyperspeed and paint this over the entire piece and I'm gonna put my mask on. Yeah. 
So I took the drawers out of the dresser. I took the hardware off and um, I'm just stripping them separately. I think that makes it a lot easier to do and kind of creates less of a mess. Okay, so I let this sit for 30 minutes and now I'm gonna take a paint scraper. Um, I have plastic ones too. Uh, these can sometimes, the metal ones can sometimes gouge. So I'm gonna show you both. Um, I don't like making, mind making gouges because I like distressed furniture. So um, I'll just show you both. If you have either one, either one will work. So then I got my paper here. Okay, so here is the plastic one. I actually like the way this plastic one is working better, so I'm gonna use this one. Look how cool. Okay, this happened last time too, so this part is sticking and not a lot of stuff is coming off here, but that's okay, I will do a second kind of application of the stripper and get all the little problems areas cleaned up. So don't worry if you're seeing stuff, something like this where the uh, stain isn't lifting. Okay, so this is what the first round of stripper did. So as you can see, a lot of it is still stuck on there. That's totally normal. So I am just gonna do a second pass and add more stripper and see how much more we can get off. You don't have to do the whole thing, just kind of do the areas that need that extra love. So you don't have to apply it to the entire top. We're gonna try to get some more of this off. Let's see how this goes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. So do not get discouraged if it doesn't all come off in the first pass. So you just gotta keep, keep at it. You guys, if you like peeling skin <laughs> after you get a sunburn, you're really gonna love doing this. But as you can see, I have a few a uh, little sticky spots left. I'm gonna grab this steel wool. Um, this is coarse, so it's a number zero. Put um, some of the stripper on here and then give it a rub and it'll kind of take off those little, do you see how it's getting those extra stuck on bits? So I just kind of keep adding a little bit of the stripper and working that down. And I'm not too concerned. Um, I don't think this really scratches up the surface that much, um, but I'm not really concerned with it because the finish that we're going for is like kind of a rustic finish. So this doesn't really need to be super smooth. So don't get um, worried about if this is gonna scratch the top. So see how all that's coming off? Yay, so awesome. And it keeps gunking up. So I just, you know, turn it over if it gets too loaded up. And if it gets too loaded up, I can always get another piece. So don't be scared to go back in and just keep, it'll just keep lifting it and lifting it. Especially on curves like this, um, it's hard to get in there with the scraper. So this is where the steel wool comes in handy. Okay, now I'm gonna show you um, this little brush. Uh, again, this is brass, so it is gonna scratch the wood up a little bit. So if you're concerned about the wood getting stretched, scratched up, uh, they have different ones like nylon ones you can use. Um, but I like my wood to get scratched up, especially since I know I'm doing that wash. Um, so see how easily that takes that off, but it is scratching the wood up a little bit. So just know that, but for the look that we're going for, that's completely fine. Like it's gunked up, but I just take a shop towel um, and I just kind of keep wiping it off and getting that gunk out. And this can go flying. So just kind of use a gentle hand. You will see that there is still some like little brown specks of residue. I'm gonna keep that, I like that because when we go and add the paint and the wax, I like to have a little bit of that dark in there. It just makes it look aged. So don't freak out if you have like a few spots that aren't coming off, especially if it's in the cracks and crevices. That is really gonna add to what the finish looks like in the end. Okay, so now that I've gotten most of the stain off, I'm going to take this denatured alcohol and do a 50-50 mix in water. So I got water in here, I'm pouring this in here. You can use mineral spirits too, so if you have that, use that. So I'm just taking a clean cloth and I'm just gonna wipe this down 
to get all that citrus strip residue off. Okay, so the piece has dried and this is what it's looking like. Again, you can see it has like an uneven finish, but when we put the wash on and um, do the wax, it's gonna, it's all gonna flow together. So don't freak out if you're seeing unevenness like that. I had that last time and it turned out great. So the next step is I'm gonna sand and I'm gonna sand with my orbital sander just cause it's gonna go faster. You definitely do not have to use an orbital sander. If you don't have an orbital sander, you can just use a piece of sandpaper, fold it up and rub it on here. If you have a sanding block, that makes it even easier too. So you just wrap this around there and you can use it right on there. Make sure you go with the grain. So as you can see here, this is my grain. So I'm gonna go up and down when I'm sanding. You just follow these lines and that's what going with the grain means. So I'm gonna give everything a good sand and prepare it for painting. And since I'm using this guy on top of my goggles and my respirator that I'm gonna use, I'm also gonna do some ear protection because this thing gets pretty loud. Okay, I've sanded everything down. So now I'm taking a tack cloth and I'm just gonna rub all the dust off. So give everything a good wipe. If you're starting with a piece that's not as dark as mine, your wood may be lighter than this. And if you wanna darken it up a little bit to make it look like this, a great stain to use to achieve this color is, is this General Finishes Wood Stain in Antique Oak. And if that's a little bit too dark, you can also mix it with some of the natural, it's, it's called a pre-stain conditioner, but it actually lightens out the stain as well. So you can mix those two together to get um, the color that you're looking for. But again, these are just for if you're looking to make your wood darker before you go on to this next step, but mine is perfect just the way it is. And I didn't have to do anything to it. I didn't have to add any stain to achieve this color. It's just what happened when I stripped it. What I wanna do is lighten this up a little bit with a white wash. And what a wash is, is it's some paint thinned out, really watered down. And so when I go to apply it, I'm gonna put it on and then kind of wipe it off right away. And it's just gonna leave a light wash of that color. Hence why it's called a wash. To make my wash, I wanna do a 50-50 ratio of water and paint. So to do that, I'm just gonna get a empty plastic container. You can use a cup, anything um, that you want. And I have a little um, eight ounces of water here. So I'm just gonna pour two ounces in here. Then I'm gonna take a marker and just kind of mark where that is. And then I'm gonna add two more ounces of water. So I'm just gonna make a line where that water is. Okay, so as you can see, I have two lines. So my first line is gonna be my paint line and then my second line is gonna be my water line. I have my container all marked off, so I'm going to mix my paint and water in there. The color I'm using today is Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. It is an off-white, so I'm just gonna shake up my paint. So I'm gonna pour my paint into that first line there. Then I'm gonna add my water until it reaches that second line that I made. And then I'm gonna mix it up really well. Just give that a good stir for about 30 seconds. You wanna make sure that that paint evenly distributes throughout all that water. This can get pretty messy, so I do use gloves during this just so I don't have to wash all that paint off when I'm done. These are just painter's rags. They're old t-shirts and stuff that have been recycled. And when you're buying these, you just wanna make sure that you're buying ones that say low lint or no lint, or you can just use a t-shirt that you have around your house. So you're gonna use one to apply the paint, and then you're gonna use one to wipe off the paint. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my first rag and dip it in my paint. And as you can see, it's very watery. <laughs> when you're doing this, you wanna work a section at a time. So I'm gonna start all the way at the top and drag it all the way down. And um, I think it just makes it easier if you do it in sections. So I'm gonna wipe it as much as I can. And then I'm gonna go right back over it and get the excess off. Like that's looking a little patchy to me. So I'm gonna try to rub in some more paint there. Um, this you just kind of have to play with 
and get a feel for. Um, and don't get too like freaked out if something's looking really streaky because once, once we're gonna put the, add some gray wax to it, that's gonna add more color and depth to it. But yeah, see that helped. So you just kind of have to play with it. Like see, it's a little patchy here. I'm gonna add some paint there. And I just don't like to let the paint sit on there very long before I go back and rub it off so it's kind of work in tandem with both hands. <laughs> are ready for the last step finally which is gonna be waxing i'm using dixie bell best dang wax in grunge gray this is a tinted wax so it's gonna add a little bit of color to our piece and seal it all at the same time all you need to apply this is another one of those lint-free cloths or old t-shirt um, you can also apply this with a wax brush if you have one but if you're new to refinishing furniture i definitely recommend using a rag so I'm just gonna take my rag and wrap it around my fingers and dip it into the wax. Get a little bit of wax on there and then I'm just gonna start rubbing it into the piece. If you haven't used wax before, um, I really want you to think of it instead of sitting on top of the piece, think of it as hand lotion and rubbing it in into the wood and into the wood grain. It's all becoming kind of like cohesive and one thing. So you don't just kind of put it on and then move to the next section. You sit there and you really like rub that product in and think about just rubbing lotion into your hands until it's kind of just one with the piece. And look at that beautiful color that that's adding. Um, it's just deepening the whole piece and really making it look pretty. If you like the way it looks without adding the gray, you could totally use a clear wax um, and just wax this piece if you like the way it looks just after you wash it. This is just the process that I did and I think it's kind of the closest dupe to like some of my favorite restoration hardware finishes. The nice thing about using a colored wax too is that you can tell where you're putting it so you know that your whole piece is gonna be protected. So I'm just gonna do this whole process over the entire piece. After this sits for 15 or 20 minutes, you're just gonna go back over it with a clean cloth and buff it out. This is gonna make sure that you don't have any globs or gloops and that everything is evenly distributed and buffed out. for my nightstands it's from target and i did get mine in store but you can also get it online and it comes with six of these just to remind you what we started with here is a look of how my nightstands looked before and here they are after I like to let my wax cure for 30 days before I permanently place anything on top of it. So make sure that once you're done with your piece, you're not setting any decorative items on it for 30 days. I've placed some lamps on here just to show you what these look like, but I am gonna take these off after I'm done. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have fun trying it out. Send me your before and afters and you can leave me a comment or any questions you have about the process below. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I'll see you guys next time.